It's Iris again. Let's read a book about a hero dog. Here's one. It's Balto, the bravest dog ever. The true story of Balto. There's Balto. By Natalie Standiford, illustrated by Donald Cook. This is a true story about a very brave dog. His name was Balto. The year was nineteen twenty-five. Balto lived in Nome, Alaska. Nome was a frontier town. Most of the year, it was buried under ice and snow. <laughs> Cold. In winter, there was no way to travel through all that ice and snow. Not on planes or trains or boats or cars. The only way to travel in Alaska was by dog sled. <laughs> That's my special dog sound. Balto was a sled dog. Sled. He worked for a gold mining company, not far from Nome. He helped carry food and tools to the miners. It was a good life for a sled dog. <laughs> Balto's driver was named Gunner. Gunner made Balto his lead dog. The lead dog runs in front. Running very fast. The lead dog runs in front of the team. He follows the trail. All the other dogs do whatever the lead dog does. So the lead dog has to be the smartest and strongest dog of all. Strong, smart, bloop, big brain. One cold winter day, a terrible thing happened in Nome. Two children got very sick. Oh! Their parents called the doctor. He was the only doctor in the whole town. When the doctor saw the children, he was very worried. The children had a Terrible sickness. It was called diphtheria. Diphtheria. The doctor did not have the medicine he needed. Without the medicine, the children would die. Without the medicine, many other people in them would get. Diphtheria and die too. Oh no! The doctor knew he had to get some medicine fast. Let's see what happens. The hospital in Anchorage, Alaska, had the medicine. Woohoo! Uh oh! But Anchorage was eight hundred miles away. Oh no! Oh, that isn't good. Oh dear. The doctors in Anchorage put the medicine on a train, but soon the train got stuck in the deep snow. Oh, the train was still seven hundred miles from now. Whoa! The people of Nome held a meeting. Everyone was very scared. What are we going to do? Asked the doctor. We have to get that medicine. At last, someone said, "What about a sled dog relay?" When one team of dogs gets tired, a new team would be ready to take over. The room buzzed with excitement. Buzzed like a bee, with all these talkings and chattering. 
That did seem like the quickest way to get that medicine. But the doctor frowned. It still will take about 15 days. That's a long time. Too long. Maybe it will take a little less or maybe a little more. Maybe the doctor was right, but there was no other choice. So the mayor spoke over the radio. Please help, he said. We need the best drivers and dogs to help save our town. Good. All right. Gunnar heard the mayor on the radio. Gunnar knew he had the best dog team and the best lead dog. Balto would come to the rescue. La 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 la. On January 27, 1925, the race to Nome began. Woohoo! Nome, Nome. Okay. 21 dog teams were in the relay. Each team waited at a different stop. The first driver took the medicine from the train. He wrapped it in fur to keep it from freezing. <laughs> then he drove his dogs as fast as he could to the second stop. He made his run in good time. But soon, the wind began to blow hard. <laughs> the air grew colder. A blizzard was coming. Oh no! It was one of the it was one of the worst storms ever. Still, the race went on. Somehow. Each dog team made it to the next top. Stop. Wow, that's great. In one team, two dogs froze to death. So the driver hit, so the driver hitched himself to the sled. He helped the rest of his dogs pull through the storm. Oh, isn't that sweet? Replacing himself with the other dogs. That's a sweet person. Gunnar and Balto waited at their stop in Bluff. They were going to run 31 miles. Woohoo! Whoa! From Bluff to Point Safety. That was the second to last part of the race. But the storm had slowed things down. Gunnar had been waiting for two days. He did not sleep. He wanted to be ready to go. As soon as the medicine arrived. But he does need sleep. The dog but maybe the dogs could just bark and wake him up when the medicine arrives. At last, Gunnar heard the dogs barking. The at the medicine was here! He put it on the sled with a small stove and a little food. Then he hitched up his dogs. Balto stood proudly in the lead. Gunner cracked his whip. <coughs> Mush! he cried. That meant go. The team ran out into the snowy night. <laughs> oh no! But first, at first, the team made good time. But soon, snowdrifts blocked the trail. The dogs sank up to their necks in snow. They could not move, so began to panic. But not Balto. He stayed calm. That helped the other dogs. Here's my impression of the patterning. Panicking dogs, no, help me, no! And Balto might be just laughing. Balto stayed calm. That helped the other dogs. Well, Gunnar dug them out of the snow. At last, the team was on its way again. That 
that's good. Then the team across the frozen river. The, the dog sent the sled, slipped, and skidded onto the ice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no! Over with the sled. Gunner got it up again, but the medicine was gone! Wildly, Gunner dug for the medicine. He could not see through the heavy snow, but at last he felt the package. He put it back with the sled. The team kept going across the river. Suddenly, Balto stopped short. Mush, Balto! shouted Gunner, but Balto did not move. Then, Gunner saw why. The ice was cracking. If the team fell into the river, they would all drown. Eh, maybe they should take swimming lessons. Balto had stopped just in time. Smart dog, Gunner told him. Then he saw that Balto's feet were wet. If they froze, Balto would never walk again. Quickly, Gunner unhitched Balto from the sled. He led the dog to a patch of powdery snow. Soon, wait, he led the dog to a patch of powdery snow. Gunner rubbed Balto's paws in the powder. Soon, they were dry. Balto was ready to go once more. Woohoo! Giddy up! I mean, mush! <laughs> Balto led the team around the cracking ice. At last, they reached solid land again. Were they still on the trail? Gunner had no idea. The snow blew so hard, Gunner could not see his own hand. Maybe he's like, I can't see my hands. And he might be looking around like searching. And then he touches his hand with his other hand and says, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> he might be like that. But Balto had run this trail many times before. Now it was all up to him. Woohoo! Finally, the storm died down. Gunner saw a point safety just ahead. Balto did it, thought Gunner. He couldn't wait to warm his hands by a cozy fire. But all the lights were out at point safety. Was the next driver there? Gunner did not know. And there was no time to find out, so Gunner and Balto did not stop. They had never been so tired, but they raced on through the night towards snow. Yeah, I mean mush. Phew! It was just before dawn, the sky began to glow. In the town of Nome, everyone was sleeping. Gunner and his team pulled into town. They had made it! Balto was too tired to bark. They had been on the trail for 20 hours straight. They had driven, whoa, 53 miles! Whoa! Gunner took the medicine to the doctor. The doctor was surprised. He thought it would take 15 days to get the medicine. But Gunner delivered it after only five and a half days. Thank you, Gunner, said the doctor. You are a hero. That was a hero, said Gunner. I could not have done it without him. The doctor went right to work. He gave the medicine to all the sick people. In a few days, they would be well. The town of Nome was saved! Woohoo! All over America, people cheered for Balto. They read about his bravery in the newspaper. Balto was the most famous dog in the world. A year later, 
the people of New York City put up a statue of Balto. It still stands in Central Park. Lots of children play on the statue. They remember Balto, the bravest dog ever. The end. Bye bye. Hope you like that.